our perception of color is not only related to the colors we see, but to the words that we give colors. My name is Gavin Evans, and I'm a lecturer at Birkbeck University, and my book is called The Story of Color, and it's about the culture of color. There are several cultures in the world, including the ancient Greeks, that did not have a word for the color blue. In fact, blue as a, as a separate color in the English language is a relatively, relatively recent uh, color. So the Himba tribe in, in, in Namibia are one of those cultures where in their language there's no color blue. So for them, blue, as with the ancient Greeks, blue is a variant of green. So when, they be, when they're shown colors with green and then and different greens and blue, they find it hard to distinguish between the greens and the blues. Interestingly, when people from England, for example, were shown um, the same color wheel, they were easily able to distinguish the blue, but then they were shown a, um, a version that was given to the Himba people, which had one color, a slightly different shade of green. The Himba people were easily able to discern that, but the English volunteers were not able to distinguish that. So what that suggests is that our perception of color is not only related to the colors we see, but to the words that we give colors. In our language, we have a distinction between light red and dark red. We call it light red pink in English. Um, but in, in Russian, there's a, two different colors for light blue and dark blue. Now, we, we don't have that. We just call them all blue. And so we would find Russian people might find it easier to distinguish between lighter and darker blues than we would because they're separate colors, just as we would find it very easy to distinguish between pink and red.